In the previous video, we have implemented a way to visualize our creation and we have created spheres in places where our agent has uh, waited. So it started here, it went here, rotated right, went here, rotated right, rotated left. And those are the spots where our agent has stopped, basically. And lines uh, represent how our agent was moving. So if we, if we change the view of our scene, we can see that this is the longest line. And of course this line, so this one is longer than this one, and this one is longer than this one, because we are reducing the length of our output, so of our drawing. And that basically makes our drawing like it is, but it is very symmetrical. And uh, we can increase the number of iterations, for example, in our L system, but it will still output a very symmetrical output, although it is very nice looking. We can already see that there could be buildings all around this space and it would look quite nice, but still it is repeatable. It always outputs this. So how can we adjust that? So what we can do is go to simple visualizer, open the script by clicking edit script. And we can play around with length and with angle. Although I have previously told you that I didn't pay much attention to length. It is something that you can improve upon. We can certainly change the angle. So if you had some constant uh, way of drawing the road, you could press play. And now you have achieved something quite different. This looks a little bit different, a little bit more organic. And maybe you could use this in your uh, procedural town. But we are constrained by, by the angle. So let's change it back to 80, uh, to 90, sorry. But as I have told you before, we have also the rules here uh, in our uh, implementation. Let's open this file up. So we can change the output of our rule. So what could we implement? Well, for example, we can add another straight line here in between the changes of the direction. So let's play right now. And we will see that now it looks much better. Although we have the issue with the length of our line, we can decrease the, the system uh, iteration number. We can play. And we can see that this outputs us much nicer output. But as you can see again, this brings us the same result every time we press play. And this isn't very good if you want to have a procedural town, because then we want to have different outputs every time. Well, while we can certainly do that, we can go the easy path and go to our rule class. So let's open it up. And that is the reason why we have implemented the get result method instead of directly accessing the results array, because now we can implement another variable serialized field. Let's set private pool random result equals by definition it will be equal to false. And we will return the result zero if the random results is false but if it is true we are going to say int random index equals unity engine dot random dot range and we are going to choose a random index from random to results dot length and now we can return our results of type of index random index so basically, we are randomizing the output of our generator, which gives us an opportunity to create much more unique uh, creations. So let's go back to Unity. OK, let's choose our scriptable object rule one and we can increase the number of rules. And let's uh, choose first one to be the default one. Next one will be the change the one that we have implemented and let's swap the size in the third one so plus for minus and minus for plus now let's save it and let's try generating our output but remember let's choose random results as true now what we will see 
is that we have random results basically upon every creation and this creates us a truly randomized output now we can see the potential where this can be included into our procedural generation okay but this is not the only solution we can apply to make a randomized result from our output let's in turn go to l system and open the l system generator script okay so what we can do here is to implement another variable let's create public pool random ignore rule modifier and let's set it to be true by default and we are going to create another parameter it will be uh, with attribute range from 0 to 1 and this will be public float chance to ignore rule and let's say this will be the modifier of value point 0.3f so we have a chance of point 0.3 so 30% chance of ignoring the rule so not creating a branch where the branch should be created and how would we implement it let's slide down to find the process rules recursively so here inside our if statement for checking the rule letter we can create if random ignore rule modifier and again i need to change the name to be correctly spelled okay and inside here if this is selected if our random dot value and we can check because this generates a value from 0 to 1 so if the generated value is less than chance to ignore rule if this value is lower than 0.3 so here we are going to simply call return so this means that we can ignore a rule while creating our L system output. Now, this isn't a perfect solution, but it will give us some uh, more randomness inside our creation. So let's go back to Unity. Okay, now if you see the L system, it has selected random ignore rule modifier and chance to ignore is set to 0.3. So now let's maybe disable the rules to create random rules. So we should expect the standard output but if we click play we can achieve something like this where this part was not never created because we have ignored this rule and we have only this part so now we can have some randomness in our creation and now it has created the full output and if we combine it with our uh, rules so let's select the random result we have this kind of output where it sometimes ignores some of the branches of our tree so we can see that it has started here or maybe i think here and it went here and ignored this rule and one thing uh, one more thing that we can see uh, is go back to our l system open up the script and we might want to only perform this if so uh, we're going to choose and iteration index is greater than one because basically at the beginning we are creating the first branch so this would mean that at the start we are going only go to uh, one way so that's why we might want to only use this value if the iteration is greater than one so in the second third and so on so let's go back to unity what this change did was ensure that our time will grow a little bit even a little bit and we can see that the outputs aren't really nice so those are the ways we can tweak our output through the rules through choosing randomly to ignore their out rule output and through changing the length and angle of our output that's all there is to all system output but of course this doesn't look very impressive so let's in the next video implement a way to instantiate a root prefab instead of those lines and instead of those prefabs and this we are going to tackle on in the next video.